Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Common Good Radio Show. Your guest hosts are Raymond Smith and my wife, Sandra Johnson. How are you doing, that young lady? I'm doing fantastic. And we're here today with the owners of Inspired Life Mortgage, who is John Spur, and the owner of Inspired Life, Inspired Life Center, Dr. Rachel. How are you doing, Doc? Doing good. Are you guys doing okay? We're Having doing a great day. We also work with uh, John Spur as our loan officer for all of our jobs and work in the industry of real estate, in case you didn't know. And we're on after this show. Yeah. Just trying to plug it off. I'm just messing up John's show all up. <laughs> John will never be sick again. He will, he will he'll never <laughs> let this happen again. So, John, we were going to start talking to you a little bit um, about lending. And one of the questions that I know um, John wanted us to ask is about interest rates and how your credit score affects the interest rate that you that you'll get on your loan that's a a great question i actually have a few customers right now that are experiencing uh, how uh, that low credit score really does affect what you're able to do and what you're able to buy and i'll use one of those as an example um they did a uh, mortgage forbearance during covid didn't understand Mm -hmm. what it was Mm -hmm. didn't follow the paperwork correctly and their score dropped down to 575 and now they're selling their home and looking to buy another home. And unfortunately, what that's done is it put them into a, we can only take them FHA type transaction, even though they have 30, 40% down. And they're looking at a rate around 7%. And Which used to be a fantastic rate years ago, right? Years ago. Not today. <laughs> Not, Not today, today, but it used to be yeah. a fantastic rate. Um, unfortunately, had they worked on their credit or even reached out to somebody to work on their credit before they started shopping for a home and falling in love with one and now we're trying to figure out how to get them in mm-hmm. it there's some things we could have done got their score up to 620 640 maybe even 660 how we got it to 660 we're looking at a completely different loan program and we're looking at rates in the low fives high fours wow and two percent on a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage is six thousand dollars extra a year wow mm. so almost well, yeah, 500 bucks a month so what is the minimum credit score that someone needs before they <clears throat> can qualify for the, even the FHA loan? Uh, FHA, you're going to be able to go down to 550. Down to 550. And um, if someone's working with you, typically, what kind of an increase can they expect to maybe be, you know, if they work on maybe paying down some cards? And what are some of those things that they can do? And what kind of a return would they expect on getting that score up? The easiest thing to do or the first thing we always look at is the balance to limit on your credit cards. Um, if you can keep the balance on your credit card to 30% of the limit, so as an example, your credit limit's 1000 bucks, keep your balance at $300 or less, that's going to keep your credit score at the highest point it can be. I pull credit for a lot of people, and they have all of their credit cards maxed out. So one of the first things we do is, like, let's start getting these balances paid down. And you see the credit score increase quickly, and the fastest doing that. How quickly does the credit score <clears throat> change? Well, if you're willing to wait and not have to pay a credit repair agency to bring the score up, um, it's going to take 90 to 120 days. Wow. There are options, what we call rapid rescore, um, but there are fees to do it, and it can be done in a matter of a few days. But it gets mm. very pricey. Do you recommend when people are looking for homes to at least when looking for credit score to come talk to you? And then you think you can provide them with a plan on how to get out of that or get that credit score back up? Absolutely. You, you referred to a borrow to me this week, right? Then we had a conversation and there's some credit challenges there. And that's exactly what we're doing right now is coming up with a plan. We're going to pay this. We're going to get this uh, collection <coughs> taken care of. We're going to get this charge off back into good standing. And in 90 days, we're going to see where credit score is at. Uh, and this person's in a situation where they don't have to buy today. And so we're able to work with them, get that score up. And it's going to make a huge difference in their rate. I think that's really, really exciting. I, I, I swear I want to talk to you all day, but I, I have the doc here, and I gotta, we got to talk to doc a little bit. How you doing today, doc? I'm great. I don't mind listening to him. He's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some questions to ask you about myths of, of your profession. Yeah, um, I believe all professions uh, have myths, and right. so I just wanted to cover a couple of them. Um, like One is you hear people say, after you start going to a chiropractor, you have to go forever. And, I mean, no one's forcing anybody to do anything. Uh, patients have the freedom to do whatever they want, uh, whatever they're comfortable with for their bodies. We work with each patient to give them the best recommendations, fix up any specific issues that they're coming to us with. And then we're always going to give 
recommendations to maintain that. Uh -huh. You got to picture your body like your car or your home. And a lot of people take care of those things a lot better than they take care of their own body. But if you don't maintain it, it's going to break down. So the reason you keep doing maintenance is because you like the results you're getting. So you think about, did you brush your teeth today? Did mm -hmm. you take a shower? Why did you do those things? And it's because you like the results that you're getting. Results. Yep. Another one is like adjustments. I hear they're, they're scary or they hurt. And so like we get people in all the time. They're scared or they're nervous about the treatments. And I always have two questions that I finish up with my consultation. One of those being, do you have any concerns with your care? And it's all about communication. So I tell them, um, you have to, I don't have a ESP. You, right. have to, you have to tell me what's working. You have to tell me what's not working. There's about 200 chiropractic techniques. Do I know all of them? I certainly do not. Uh, but there's just like there's not one perfect diet for everybody. There's not one perfect technique for everybody. And we have to figure out what works for the best for that patient and provide that service for them. And I think one of the coolest things in my office is different from other offices. Usually you go into an office, you see the same doctor every time. Right. In my office, so... I am part owner of Inspired Life Center. My business partner, Dr. Courtney Davis, you can jump between the two of us and see see both of us. Some people prefer one or the other. We don't care. We just want you to get the best results. Right. We're very similar, but doctors, their, their techniques are like artists. Everyone's a little different. We just want to have you get the best results. I like that. And the thing I love the most is when you said, um, I put thank you down as my note because you can't read minds. And sometimes we think that when we go to you and you've done something that you already know what's wrong and we know you know our pain level you don't know unless we talk to you about it yeah and I like the fact that you take the time to tell people make sure you tell me what's going on before you leave the door not afterwards let me know now and then we can work on something for the next time and if we upset somebody because they didn't like something we did right. I don't I don't know that I hear people all the time because they've had bad experiences with previous doctors like don't do this and the doctor tricks them and does it that is so wrong yes how are you supposed to earn the trust? It's like, and it's not that we are giving them all the results they want. Like, it's a team effort, and we have to be in it together. And is this where you provide a plan? Like I was talking with John, you have a plan when they come in the doors. Here's how we're going to work it. How many Always. times you need this? It's based on your history. So we do that full consultation. We uh -huh. look at the exam results. Sometimes we refer out for X-rays, uh, and everyone heals differently. It's not like a here's your bologna and cheese sandwich. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, you know, maybe you want the Wagyu beef burger. I don't know. And you know I do. They are, they are so good. They are good. Chef Hogg, <laughs> make us Wagyu beef burgers. Yes. Oh, let me write that down, Chef Hogg. We want Wagyu beef burgers. Yeah. So, it, it, and everybody, their results are different. Um, people are going to have flare-ups here or there. I always tell people after the first adjustment, like, pay attention to how you feel. You might be better. You might be worse, like achy or sore, and you might not notice any difference. There's no wrong answer here. It's just the body feedback that right. we need to know so we know how to go forth with your care. I like the fact that you're a team and you work together and we have you and the other doctor, and so you work really hard to get those kind of things together and have the same kind of outlook when you're talking with patients. Yeah. It's, it's about quality of life <laughs> and making people happy. That, that And that is well said. Well, we are um, going to go to break. You are here with the Common Good Radio Show, and we'll be back in a minute. We are back on the air. This is Sandra Johnson and Raymond Smith filling in for John McLean. And we are here with uh, Dr. Rachel from Inspired Life Center. And she is, actually, you guys provide quite a few services. Yes, we do. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about, we've talked about the chiropractic. Um, but you also have a, I don't know if it's a new technology, new to me, but the soft wave. Yeah, it's my favorite technology so far. It was new to us uh, about a year and a half ago. We purchased this or invested in this technology. I believe it's only been in the United States for about five and a half years. Uh, see, soft wave is a version of litho lithotripsy. It's a challenging word for me. Um, but that's what hospitals use to break up kidney stones. It's just not as strong as what they use. So... Um, I called my, my dear friend Donna t earlier this morning because I wanted to know if I could use her and I'm actually uh, she's the owner of S Southern Arizona Family Services and uh, is a local business owner. They, she employs 300 employees and their goals are to help keep people in home in home care, in home support and she's very active. She's running around burning the candle at both ends 
She's been dealing with an arthritic knee for about four years, and she's done everything, natural medical interventions to work on managing her pain. Um, She would get up in the middle of the night because it's a 10 out of 10. She'd have to walk around, and she finally saw an orthopedic surgeon, uh, scheduled a full knee replacement. They guaranteed her that she would be able to do all the things she wanted to do, no pain, regular range of motion, no limitations. And we'd just gotten this machine that year and a half ago. I looked at her and said, Donna, I don't know. I can't guarantee that. I don't know how they can. Um, But we just got this new technology, and I think it'd be worth it for you to try it. It sends um, sound waves, basically, into the tissues of the body, and it stimulates your body's own dormant stem cells to help heal and repair that area, and it creates more blood flow pathways to that area. And the overall goal is decreasing pain and inflammation. So we went forward with her treatments. We did about three, and she canceled her knee replacement. Wow. Uh, She also had a follow-up with a different orthopedic surgeon, and he told her to just keep doing what she was doing because she was getting awesome results and couldn't tell her that a knee replacement would give her the results that they said. So now she is very active with her work, her grandkids, all the things she wants to do. Very little discomfort, sometimes no pain at all. And, I mean, that's what warms my heart so much is I get to see her happy and doing the things she wants to do. And... I asked her, I'm like, is this, is this it? And she goes, it is. It, the treatment's working and I'm never having, I'm never having a knee replacement. <laughs> That's good. And with that being said, how, how more often do you think she's have to keep coming in or is it at a certain point, once you feel better that you're done? Yeah, I get that question every time. The, we give our treatment recommendations based on the research. So uh-huh. usually it's six to eight treatments per body part. It depends. I've got my husband over here who likes to keep injuring himself. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, let's go soft wave it. And I don't know. We'll see how many we need. Uh, but six to eight treatments over about six weeks. And she comes in more often, but some people I never see again. Some people, it's every few months. Uh-huh. It's just whenever she feels it and it's tweaky. But She's been good for a long time. So I just tell people, I, d- I don't know what maintenance looks like because I don't have that crystal ball. I like that idea. You don't, you don't sit there and, we got to do it this many times. No, we have to do it till you feel better. And then when you feel better, then... You, you feel, feel it coming on again because yeah. you're, you're using it all the time. And the worse the damage of the, the joint, probably the more they're going to need. And I'm straight shooter with people. Yeah. I go, well, you've got bone-on-bone arthritis. You're going to probably need some maintenance care. I don't know what that looks like yet. We just have to see how your body heals. I think this is going to sound like a silly question, but you talk about body parts. Are there body parts that you cannot, that that cannot be used on? The only thing we do not treat over are pacemakers directly. That doesn't mean we can't treat a shoulder or a knee or a a low back. Uh, We do not treat directly over a pregnant woman's belly or back, Mm -hmm. but we could treat their knee or their shoulder. Um, And active cases of cancer that people know about, and they say that because it is considered since it creates angiogenesis which is laying down those blood pathways and bringing more blood flow to the area that it would feed the cancer oh okay and then um yeah i forgot yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> well, i, I have to say that i i was able to come in and try the soft wave myself and when i came into you i was barely walking i don't even know what happened but it was fun I just, wasn't it Oh, it was it was the best time ever. If you sold tickets to this, I'd say go VIP because yeah. it was great. No, I, actually, it was good for me, though. And I do not like to take medications if I don't have to because it feels like a slippery slope. Once you start on one, then you're on two and three. And so I was looking for an alternative to muscle relaxers and things like that. And I would say that I had some really great results as well with the soft wave. I love it, and it it just it's the it's I'm so glad we invested in it because it's helped so many people. I didn't realize how many people were coming in with chronic conditions just to maintain them, but we've been able to take them to another level without the drugs, without surgery, and it's quick. Mm-hmm. There's zero downtime. You're yeah, in the office for yeah, maybe that is true. Yeah. maybe 15 minutes, but the treatment's like five and. So are you putting the software out there on your on your website and things like that so people understand that that's, that's it's a on the great website. option? We're stuff. advertising on okay, other great, radio great. as well. And I think you mentioned to me that athletes are using this technology as well. They certainly are. Fast results. I have a question we have for you. Then. I think it's common thought for many people that the chiropractic treatment headaches, you treat headaches and back pains. What's the big picture? What was really the big picture of chiropractics? Yeah, it's really rare that we get people to come in just to get their spine checked, even though as we go through life, people get their eyes checked and you get all these body parts checked, but no one looks back there. 
<laughs> right. Um, so that's our goal. But people come in with their complaints, headaches, back pain. Um, and there's a lot of times uh, that we get patients that have been working on their health elements for like one year, five years, ten years. Down the line, they've been chasing the problem of their symptoms, and they end up worse than when they began. They usually have exhausted all the medical system, and they don't know what else to do. They don't want to be on drugs or, surger- or do surgery. Uh, so the big picture of chiropractic care is that we look at the cause of the problem, which is usually interference in that nervous system from stuck joints in the spine. Those problems are caused by the stresses in our ongoing life. Uh, referencing back to the first myth I talked about, once you go in, you have to keep going forever. If people aren't working on their self-care and they're not handling their life stresses, how they eat, exercise, a lot of different things, um, their body's going to break down. So that's when people develop these lifestyle diseases, chronic uh-huh. pain symptoms. Mm-hmm. And so the big picture of chiropractic care is to prevent health, health issues from happening and maintain the body for optimal function, allowing the best quality of life, getting to do the, what you want to do. Now you talked about interference. You mean that the blood is interfered by something else, blocking it or something like that? I'm our, our spinal joints uh-huh. and our extremity joints can lock up. Uh-huh. The fancy term for that subluxations. I don't ever expect anybody to remember that. But I'm going to use that next week. Subluxations. Yeah. I'll type it for you. I'll write it down. <laughs> um, but that, those stuck joints, they put pressure on our spinal cord, our nervous system, and those nerves feed everything in the body. So right. when you put pressure on a nerve, how is that nerve communicating with the heart or and the stomach? Very curious about the, the stress also being an effective or rather a cause for that kind of a interference it's our daily stresses so physical people Uh sit at their desk all the time they trip and fall right right think of that like the car hits a pothole and you don't go get it aligned that's what's happening to the body so that's physical but it's also environmental stresses like medications and diet and then emotional stresses how do people get a hold of you doc at 520-390-2966 you can look at inspiredlifecenter.net search us on facebook Five two zero three nine zero two nine six six. You don't have a web page or nothing like that. I said it, Ray. Okay. Inspiredlifecenter dot net. Oh, I, I'm looking for dot com. Wait to hear dot yeah. com. I didn't hear dot com. Like Do that. not go to dot com. No. You want to okay. go to dot net. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Just call us three nine zero two nine six six. You're listening to the Common Good Radio Show. This is San Diego I. Welcome back. This is not John, if you didn't know. And this is Ray Smith, and I'm with my um, beautiful counterpart, Sandra Johnson. Hi, babe. Hi. And we're here with the Inspired Life Mortgage owner, um, John Spur. And we talked with him before about the credit score effect on, on your interest rate and what type, of, what type of loan that would afford you to get. But then we're going to now talk about the, the Fed and how now they're raising rates. How, again, would this affect the mortgage rates? And is it a good time to buy a home? So we had talked about this before with the Fed. Yeah. The rate that they control doesn't directly affect mortgage rates. They control short-term rates, which in turn affects the stock market, affects the bond market, and how bond market trades. Um, the last couple times the Fed has raised, rate, raised rates, it didn't have the impact that everybody expected it would on mortgage rates. Mortgage rates didn't react as and move as high as people believe they would. Right. And it's mainly because we're, we're I believe we're starting to get to a point that mortgage-backed security traders, people that trade mortgage paper on the secondary market, don't want to start getting into these higher coupons. Um, so the this last round of rate hikes from the Fed was already kind of baked into the mortgage rates we already had, and we didn't okay. see much of a change. Um, what is changing it is, and, and we've seen rates go up about a quarter of a percent in the last week, are inflation fears. And inflation, mm-hmm. num- inflation doesn't seem to be slowing down or taping or off or flattening out. We had one good inflation number, but everything else has been right. fairly ugly in showing that, you know, we're we're still buying stuff and we're still spending money and we're still willing to pay elevated prices for it. Right. Um so I think we're not gonna see any real good relief in mortgage rates or flattening of them until that inflation's under control. Um but the Fed Fed fund rate has not had that effect on okay. mortgage rates. So that the half or three quarter percent next month is probably already going to be baked into the rates we currently have. I thought <clears throat> a, a while back we had talked about, and maybe I, you know me, I, I don't hear well, and talking about the reason for not the, the fear of changing and refinancing that we raised the rate so high, yeah, they're feared that the people might start refin- refinancing once the rate goes down. 
Is that still a fear out there, or the people aren't worried about that? Well, no. So uh, uh, lenders look at that all the time. They, when they close a loan, they're paying a premium for that loan up front, right? And they have to collect X amount of payments. It could be twenty-four, thirty-two, thirty-six payments before they break even. And we all saw in the last refi boom, people were willing to refi for a quarter percent lower in rate. So, if we rates get pushed up to six and a half, seven, seven and a half, these lenders may not necessarily want to go there because they know as soon as it goes to seven and 18 months, everybody's going to refi. And it goes seven and three quarter, they're going to refi. Right. And, you know, six and three quarter. And, that's, and so they're kind of putting the brakes on what they're willing to purchase on those higher rates because they don't, they see rates coming down and they may be losing money on the higher end rate mortgage through people refinancing. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, people don't know about that. And when you were talking to me about that before, I'm like, wow, that's something I didn't understand about refinancing and, and having your mortgage in a while. Sometimes, you're thinking it's all about you and it's all about the house. It's really about the people who do the loans and how they get paid. And so it's important that they get paid for, loan, for lending you the money. Man, in the mortgage world, we're all paying a premium up front to get the transaction done for you uh -huh. and then making our money after that loan closes. So if that loan pays off early, we didn't make what we expected to or what our margin would have been okay. on that transaction if it pays off sooner than we expected to. Um, with the recent increase in home values, um, we've seen in the news that homeowners have more equity in their homes now than historically than they've ever had. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that equity is and also um, how that money could possibly help them achieve some of their other financial goals? Yeah, so over the last couple of years, I helped a lot of first time home, first time home buyers buy a home. And I now get a call that, hey, I, I know I have some sort of equity in my house. Uh, how do I get that money? Um, and it, and it, at first I chuckle and then I realized, well, they're first time home buyers. They're significantly younger than me. They weren't taught about finances at school. Right. Um, and so I'll explain to them, I go, well, your house is like a giant savings account and you have all this money in there, but guess what? You can't touch it. You can't get to it unless you sell it or you refinance or we do a home equity line of credit. So yes, you bought your home for two hundred, and now it's worth three seventy-five. So you have one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars equity in your home, or in your big bank account. But the only way you can get it is to sell, refi, or do a home equity line of credit. Um, and so, we are now seeing a ton of home equity line of credit requests. Is, is it mainly from um, first home buyers, or it's everybody? Wow. I, I mean, anybody that has equity in their property, and it's for all sorts of different reasons. I have a lot of people paying off debt. A lot of people wanting to improve their home, add a bedroom, add the bathroom, remodel the kitchen, put mm. a pool in. I have a lot of requests for solar, uh, to put solar panels on the house or a new roof, AC units. And I have several people that are taking equity out of their home to use as a large down payment on a second home or investment property. Uh, but the requests for HELOCs have gone through the roof, so much so that some companies that offer HELOCs, it's taking them three and four months to complete the transaction. The, wow. the, the demand is so high. Can you tell me what HELOCs is? Home equity line of credit. So think of it as a giant credit card on your house is what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a variable rate. The rate, that rate is controlled by the Fed fund. So when the Fed increases rate, the rate on your HELOC will go up. But it's still a phenomenal tool to help you access that equity in your home and put it to use for you. I actually got a call just this last week about um, a HELOC. And then the question of my rate just went up you know, substantially. And I just took this out in January. Is that right? And I'm like, did you read your paperwork? Because they should have told you in there how much, you know, wh whether there's a limit to what those increases can be and how often you're going to get them. And so... Sandra, no one reads the paperwork. <laughs> this is so true. <laughs> but, John, you can also use it as just a safety barrier, right? Yeah, well, wait, it's also something that we talk to people a lot of time, and one's one of the things that we did, just because we're both business owners, we put mm -hmm. an equity line on our house, because some months are good, some months are bad. Sometimes yeah. there's a piece of equipment we might want to buy, and we can purchase it right away. So it's yeah, it's or here's a the sweet investment property we want to buy for you. For you. Oh, yeah. thank you, you so know much. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, we like the way you think. <laughs> but it's just a, it's a great. If you have equity in your home, it's a great tool to use and have. And if you're using it, you pay on it. And if you don't use it you don't pay on it. Go back to what you were alluding to on the interest rate going up. Um, a lot of these home equity line of credits have teaser rates, especially if you're doing the ones that come in the mail from this, you know, yeah. rocket mortgage people or something like that. Um, yeah. They have a teaser rate. 
and for the first six months it's one nine nine and then it goes to your fully indexed rate that might be eight or nine percent mm. whoa yeah so then you have a very big jump in your payment so what is the cost of establishing that HELOC in case you want to have that safety net that Dr. Rachel was talking about? We have two or three companies that we work with. If you have good credit scores and you have good equity, um, you're looking at about six to $700 worth of cost to get the transaction done. Okay. okay well, hey, we'll, we have to run a break right now, so we'll be back and pick up where we left off. We're back to the show. It's Ray Smith and Sandra Johnson in for John McClain. And we're here with the Inspired Life Mortgage owner, John Spur. Hey, John. We were before we went to break. We were talking a little bit about HELOCs and the cost of establishing um, a HELOC loan, which you said was around six to eight hundred dollars. But talk to us a little bit about using that as a safety net. Yeah, there's again a lot of things to use it for, and it just in this day and age with inflation and people's paychecks not going as far, and it's just more expensive to live. And really, there may be some uncertainty in the job market soon. Mm -hmm. We don't know. It's just a good tool to, like you said, be a safety net. It can just, you can go do a home equity line of credit for whatever the equity is in your home. Let's say you have 80000 You do an $80,000 HELOC and you don't take any money off of it. It just sits there. It's like a giant credit card on your house, but it doesn't have that massive rate that credit cards have today. And then when you need it, it's there. It's there for an emergency. It's there to supplement your income if you happen to lose a job and have to find another one. Um, it's you know there to pay college tuition if student loans don't come in or a grant doesn't happen. There's a lot of different reasons you can use it and have it. And so I think it's a great tool, especially while there's a lot of equity in people's property right now, to take advantage of that and have that safety net. And how long does that HELOC, that line of credit, stay open? They vary from lender to lender. The one that I like the best that I have access to is a 10-year, what we call a 10-year draw period. So for 10 years, you can use it, pay it off, use it, pay it off as much as you want. Mm -hmm. And then it will go into a 20-year repayment with a with a fixed rate and a fixed payment at that point. How, how long does this process take, John? Um, if you top-tier credit, you know, a great borrower and the, the lender that I like using, you can be done in about three weeks. If we have a few credit issues, the, the lender I have to take you to is running about three to four months. And they're running three to four months because there are a lot of people have realized it's time to take advantage of that equity in their property, get that safety net in place, and that the HELOC rate is significantly less than consumer debt rate right now. Yeah, the consumer debt, I mean, just what you hear on the on the news and stuff is that it, it, we're starting to see an increase in c the average consumer debt and with the interest rates going up the way that they have I'm concerned for consumers because I'm like everyone else I'm looking at I try to pay myself even though I'm a business owner I try to pay myself the same amount every month and it just doesn't go as far as it used to there's just no getting around it no, with three, four, or five dollar gallon gas and the price of food going up and everything else, you, you unfortunately have a lot of people that have to choose between, you know, am I buying this sandwich or buying that sandwich, or I'm putting fuel in my car wow. and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be buying less food. And a lot of people have been resorting to their credit cards. We've seen credit card balances just skyrocket right. for people that were pulling credit on to buy a home. And I know those rates on credit cards are anywhere from 9, 10 to as much as 24%, depending on what type of credit you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think once you start, you know, having some issues with cash flow, if you're making late payments, you're going to see that credit card rate going up. And at that point, it's probably hard to get that HELOC in place once you've gotten yourself in it when you need it the most. It's the hardest to get. Exactly. And, and HELOCs do require that you have good credit. You're, you're gonna, the lowest we're going to be able to go is about a 680 credit score. So you okay. need a 680 credit score or higher. So, again, I'm not saying that everybody needs this emergency tool or that all of a sudden everybody's going to have such debt problems that they should have this in place. But if you can qualify for it today, $800 is a drop in the bucket to have a big safety net. So if something does happen in the future, you have access to it. Can you give that money back? Can you give that money back? I'm trying to understand if, if I do this and I get eighty thousand out of it, is eight thousand miles or can I put it, can I put it back in the house? So and it's again, it's like a credit card on your house. So if I did an eighty thousand dollars HELOC for you at closing, you would pay your eight hundred dollars in closing costs or whatever they were roughly, but you don't have to take any money. 
But now that equity in your house you couldn't access before, you can because I have an equity line on it. And you actually get a credit card that is tied to that equity line. You get a checkbook, and then you can also draw on it online and transfer money to your bank account. And then let's say you need a new roof, $10,000. Put it, Draw $10,000 off of your equity line. You start making payments on it. You sell 10 houses this month, and you make a lot of money. You're like, oh, I'm going to pay my equity, equity line off. You pay it off, and then it's there for you to use again. Okay. You know, one of the other products that I have been really intrigued with, but I don't see it I don't I have not seen it be used often is a reverse purchase. And you you've told me in the past that you do have access to that product. Can you talk us through kind of the pros and cons of of a re reverse purchase? So, you're referring to a reverse mortgage. Mm -hmm. And at the mortgage everybody's familiar with is called a forward mortgage where you have a mortgage payment every month on your balance. A reverse mortgage is you have a mortgage balance that you never make a payment on. Um, it does require that if you're buying a home, that you have a sizable down payment because it's based on the equity that's in the property. And uh, is that, a, I have heard it's around 50%. It's, is that yeah, accurate? It's, it's going to be somewhere between 30 to 50% uh, depending on your credit worthiness and actually depending on the size of the house. Okay. You know, a a $200,000 home is going to have significantly less equity mm -hmm. per percent than a million dollar home. Right, thirty percent equity in a million dollar home is three hundred grand, and thirty percent equity in a two hundred thousand dollar home is sixty grand. There's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, but what's nice about it for people that are of retirement age and are on a fixed income, you are able to put a roof over your head and not have to make a payment. For people that are retired and own their home free and clear, they can do a reverse mortgage, and the house will actually send them a check each month. They can use their house as a retirement tool. Mm -hmm. Maybe this retired couple has a mortgage of two hundred thousand, but now they got a bunch of equity in their house because the last couple of years they can do a reverse mortgage and tap that equity. They're no longer making the payment they used to make, and they're going to be able to get a check each month to help pay for their bills and whatnot in retirement. So there's a lot of great uses for a reverse mortgage, uh, especially in an economy we're in right now where we have high inflation mm -hmm. and, and retirees are on fixed income, mm -hmm. have equity in their property. A reverse mortgage is a great way to access that equity and uh, control their finances and control their expenses. I really, for me, it's the quality of life, which is something I've heard both um, you and Dr. Rachel talk about is quality of life. Dr. And when um, when we're looking at whether you know someone is on a limited income and they're making sacrifices daily because they're not sure if they can afford maybe medication or you know afford to do not even necessarily things that they love but go to the doctor there are people that are making those decisions and if they were willing to take advantage of the equity that they have their quality of life would really improve and they may even actually find themselves traveling or doing things you know, it, it, later in life that that they wouldn't otherwise financially be able to do. Uh, I agree. Um, I think reverse mortgages in general have gotten a bad name because there have been some unscrupulous companies mm -hmm. out there that right. are taking advantage of people. And so that reverse mortgage is scary for uh, the individual who owns the home. The other part that I think comes up a lot is the individual owns a home, mom and dad, they're talking to their kids and saying, I think we're going to do a reverse mortgage. And the kids don't understand what it is. And they look at it, people stealing the equity out of the home that they might inherit. Or if they do a reverse mortgage, they're not going to be able to sell the home. And all of that stuff is false. If that house can still be transferred to the heirs of the will when mom and dad pass away, they still have the opportunity to sell it and get the equity out of it. Or they can pay off the mortgage and one of them move into it. All that stuff is still available. Right. A reverse mortgage doesn't negate that. It's just a tool that allows retirees to live a better life, right? You worked for 30, 35, 40 years, and you bought this house, and now you're on a fixed income, and all of a sudden gas tripled, and you still have a mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in that position. You can do a reverse mortgage. It will eliminate the mortgage payment, and if there's equity, it'll help you pay your bills month in and month out. I think the problem is trying to find a reputable lender, you know, someone who's, who's not out there to take them for all they have. So what are some of the tools you tell them, hey, what are the things, here's some things you should be looking for 
when you are thinking about doing something like that? You want to work with somebody that's actually done reverse mortgages first. Okay. Um, it is a process to get approved to do reverse mortgages. Mm-hmm. You have to go through certain classes and you have to get approved with the lenders. The nice thing about a reverse mortgage today is you are, as the borrower, required to do multiple HUD counseling sessions with an independent third party who's going to review the documentation I provide and say, yeah, wow, they're not ripping you off. This is how it's going to work. And what I provide that counselor at the beginning and what I provide them at the end, better match. Mm-hmm. I like that. And that kind of protects our seniors as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. Well, I just want to say what a dynamic team you guys are. Um, we have John and his wife, Dr. Rachel. And, you know, um, Dr. Rachel had mentioned, you know, the healthy life and healthy finances kind of go hand in hand. Um, but your inspired life, car- well, inspired life mortgage, I'm sorry, an inspired um, life center at the chiropractic and I, you're more whole whole wellness right because you're doing way more than just chiropractic yeah it, you can't uh, touch one part of the body and not affect the rest right mm-hmm. it's all connected right. i always refer to it as a guitar string so there's got you know you can't tune one part of the guitar string it's it's all connected and so looking at that as if you don't have your finances in line and you're stressed about that Ray, those are the stresses I'm talking about, yeah, emotional, yeah, that yeah. everybody has emotional stresses. They don't want to admit it. Nobody wants to be vulnerable, but we all have it. Everybody handles it differently. Yes. And people don't want to be dependent on maybe like medications and they've, they've got stress, causes problems, and it's all about that quality of life. Yeah, your team seems to be taking care of people. And just like us in the real estate business, we're all t- about taking care of people. If you take care of people, this job in this life is not a job, it's a profession. Your profession is amazing. You guys do a great job of it together. That's what makes us happy, is helping people and seeing their happiness and their success. Tell us one more time how to reach you guys. 520-390-2966 for Inspired Life Center, www.inspiredlifecenter.net. And you can call me on my cell phone, 520-247-3610 for Inspired Life Mortgage. And we'd like to thank all of us, bank, all of our sponsors. <laughs> And um, you'll have John McLean back next week. This is a Common Good radio show. Thank you for joining us today.